Welcome back to our video series, Spartan Stories, Tales from UNC Greensboro's University Archives. In this series, we're introducing you to some people, events, or other stories from UNCG's history. Stories you might not know, or that you might have forgotten. Today we're going to explore some of the bygone buildings of UNCG and look at the fate of some of the earliest campus structures. At the time of its opening in 1892, the State Normal and Industrial School, now UNCG, consisted primarily of four buildings, two dormitories, a main building, and the President's home. Smaller outbuildings existed, but these four structures served as the heart of campus activity. Today, only the main building remains. In 1960, it was renamed the Faust Building in memory of the institution's second president, Julius Faust. So what happened to the other original structures? Brick Dormitory was one of two campus buildings in the original plans created by the architecture firm of Epps and Hackett in Greensboro. It was also known as the Matron's Hall or the Living Building. Like the main building, Brick Dormitory was built of brick, trimmed with granite, covered with metal shingles, and plastered with cement. Brick Dormitory was located to the east of Main Building, near the site of the new nursing and instructional building. The three-story Brick Dormitory was built in various stages. By 1895, it included a kitchen, an infirmary room, and a dining hall that held 150 students. A final wing was added at the rear of the building in 1903 to add more student rooms and larger dining and kitchen facilities. Brick Dormitory also served as a site for socialization amongst the students. In the evenings between study hour and lights out, students would sit on the steps singing songs and telling stories. Unfortunately, Around 3.45 a.m. on the night of January 20th, 1904, the campus night watchman discovered a fire and began evacuating residents of Brick Dormitory. Faculty resident Minnie Lou Jameson and students quickly alerted all of the 300 plus residents of Brick Dormitory. One student resident, Josephine Scott, ran outside in her nightgown to ring the college bell and sound the alarm until everyone was safely out of the building. Thanks to these alerts, as well as previous fire drills, no lives were lost and no one was seriously injured in the evacuation. The dormitory building, however, was completely destroyed, with total loss due to the fire evaluated at nearly $65,000. The other residence hall in the early years of our university was originally known as Wooden Dormitory. The 22-room residence hall was nicknamed Midway after the Chicago Exposition of 1893 and later called Guilford Dormitory. This frame building was not included in the original building agreement between the school and the city of Greensboro, so the school's board of directors were forced to mortgage the property along with the president's house for $9,000. As was the case with Brick Dormitory, students who lived in Wooden Dormitory were directly supervised by lady assistants who served almost as house mothers. The students in Wooden Dormitory, however, faced an extra challenge compared to those in Brick Dormitory. Rigid standards of dress dictated that no lady could be seen on the streets without hat and gloves. Therefore, students had to be properly attired before they could walk from their room in Wooden Dormitory to the dining hall in Brick Dormitory. The college's first practice school was housed in the right wing of the dormitory until Curry Building was constructed. The dormitory was raised in 1935 to make room for the current alumni house. Finally, the fourth building from the original campus was the President's House. This two-story, ten-room house was built in 1892 on the southwest corner of College Avenue and Spring Garden Street, for President Charles Duncan McKeever and his family. Although President McKeever passed away in 1906, Mrs. McKeever lived there until her death in December 1944. The President's house was torn down in 1952. Soon after the class of 1923, on the occasion of its 30th reunion, commissioned a small brick foundation from which the original 1892 school bell, or university bell, would hang. In 1967, on the occasion of the university's 75th anniversary, the student body voted to build a more elaborate brick setting on the site and named this Student Anniversary Plaza. 
Student Anniversary Plaza was renovated in 2005 to incorporate the VAC Bell Tower. I hope you enjoyed this Spartan story and our look at bygone buildings from the early years of UNCG. You can find lots more on our Spartan Stories blog at uncghistory.blogspot.com.